Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Mustafa. Mashallah. These are your Akhis Mustafa and Abdul Qadir here at the DMV Islam page. Inshallah ta'ala we're going to be doing a series called Everyday Muslim where basically we're just going to have a conversation and inshallah anyone tuning in can can benefit sure. from the conversation that we have basically. And like I said, this, this segment is called Everyday Muslims. Just, yeah. just your everyday Muslims talking. We ain't, we're not sheikhs or nothing like that. Yeah, it's free so, talking. Um, just free talking. Um, so, um, so, Yaqi, uh, Abdul Qadr, what nah. is the, uh, what are we talking about today? Let me ask you a question. How do you get to Jannah? How do you get to Jannah? Yeah. Well, there's a hadith of the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, where basically the, 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 the meaning of the hadith, basically anyone who dies upon Tawheed, mm -hmm. anyone who meets Allah, having not associated any partners with him yeah. in worship, Allah promises them Jannah. It's their right upon Allah. So that's Jannah. That's Jannah. If you, you have die, Tawheed, you believe in the oneness of Allah, you straight to Jannah. You get in the Jannah. It's Allah's Jannah. promise because it's... Allah's promise must be fulfilled. Oh, definitely. So it's, it's, it's all Allah. Yeah, if you Allah promises you something, you will get it. It's done. It's guaranteed. It, nothing yeah, can No stop. doubts at all. MashaAllah. Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah. But we have to keep in mind also, Allah is the most merciful. He's ar -Rahim. Of course. But just because Allah has made this promise to us, that does not mean that we can go to... That doesn't mean we have a backstage pass to the Haram concert. Basically. So so we can't just have Tawheed and then do everything else. No, that that's incorrect because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he I still, think. you know, did righteous deeds. He still asked for forgiveness. So just because you have Tawheed, it doesn't mean <clears throat> that you can just commit sins just yeah, because yeah. of Allah's promise. Yeah. Even though we take Shahada and we become Muslim or born Muslim, MashaAllah, Alhamdulillah, you still seek Allah's pleasure. Yeah. You seek his face and you seek you seek for him you seek for him to love you yeah you know what i mean so 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 you basically said if you have tawheed right if you believe in the oneness of allah right it's not just enough you also got you have to pray right you have to fast right you have to give zakat right and you basically you have to be a muslim you have to be a muslim we we submit to allah in every s the word the definition of muslim i'm not a rocket scientist but i yeah. don't think it means that you submit 75% of the time i got you or 50% of the time i got you you matter of fact allah says in the quran basically <clears throat> We we should we come wholeheartedly into Islam. You yeah. should submit your whole self. Yeah. You know so, your whole self in submission to Him. Basically. So you gotta go all in. All in. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. So basically, to hit by itself is not enough. No. You gotta put in work. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Allah's like we say, Allah's promise is true. He is Al Haq. He is Al Rahim. Yeah. The yeah most merciful. Yeah. But at the same time, after you you know you abandon shirk totally. Yeah. You cannot. You have to abandon shirk totally. You have to. You have to abandon shirk totally. You have to completely disbelieve in shirk and believe only in Allah. There's only Allah, that's it. Right. But after that, seek Allah's pleasure. That's the sunnah. Seek his pleasure. Seek seek his love, you know. And one of the ways to do that is by staying away from haram. Right. Yeah, there's a verse in the Quran where Allah Azza wa Jalla says, uh, Truly Allah loves those who save themselves from sin. MashaAllah. So stay away from haram. Right. As, yeah. as best you can. Yeah. We're going to make mistakes with sons of Adam and... That's how we are. I mean, but you try your best. You I know? mean, it's, it's Allah knows that we will make mistakes. You know, right. Allah knows that we're gonna do haram. You know, sometimes we're gonna forget to lower our gauge. You know, we're gonna look up. Sometimes we're gonna pray late. You know, it's, it's, Allah knows it, and that's one of His names is uh, Al Ghafur. He forgives, he forgives us. Forgives. Not yet. Mashallah. So yeah, you know, you 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 try your best. That's the point. You yeah. strive. Yeah. You it's, know what I mean. That goes with either I just said right now. Allah Azza wa Jal. That's one of the ways to to, to, to earn Allah's pleasure, Allah's love, and and and, and that is to stay away from sin. Mm -hmm. And there's another verse in the Quran where Allah says, "Allah loves those who repent." So if you make any mistakes, you know Allah loves it when you go back to Him and you ask for forgiveness. Mashallah. You, know, you ask Allah like, and you say, "Allah, I made, I did this and this. Forgive me." And of course, Allah will forgive you. Mashallah. As long as you're sincere, you know you you're sincere with your du'a and you're asking Him seriously, you know. Mashallah. And you stay, you stay away from the haram that you did. MashaAllah. And then another beautiful thing that I love, MashaAllah, Allah is the most courteous and the most kind. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah. basically, the one who repents from sin mm -hmm. is like the one who has no sin. Yeah. So look at how courteous and kind Allah is. 
He doesn't hold anything against you. People, you know, he doesn't remind you of your sin. If you repent, it's as if you never sinned. So subhanAllah, look at how Allah constantly gives us a fresh start and a, and, a, and, a, and a way to just begin anew. But we have to take advantage of it, basically. Yeah, yeah. You know? and we always got to go back to Allah and ask his forgiveness. Always. We and, have to, and, and, and we always have to worship Allah the way he told us to worship. You know, we right. always got to glorify him the way he told us to glorify him. Right. Yeah. Not the way we want. Yeah. Yeah. And you always got to put Allah in front of everything else. You know, you have to, if you want to go to Jannah, you have to please Allah. You know, your salah, your zakat, that, that does not take you to Jannah. What takes you to Jannah is Allah's uh, pleasure. If Allah loves you, you'll go to Jannah. We do these, uh, you know, we do the salah, zakat. It's just to, to, to show Allah that we love him. So once Allah sees that we love him, then he's going to give us Jannah, of course. That's, 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 his, that's his promise. Mashallah. He said, if you live here, you do what he tells you to do. You stay away from what he told you to stay away from. Mm -hmm. You got Jannah. MashaAllah. MashaAllah. And, and alhamdulillah, that's, that's, that's true. That's, 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 that's very true. And then the thing about it is, you know, Allah, the more you love Allah, this is what Ibn Taymiyyah, Rahim Allah. May Allah be pleased with I mean, one of our great, great scholars. He said, basically, the more the servant perfects Tawheed, the more the servant loves Allah. And the more the servant loves Allah, the more Allah loves him. So subhanAllah. And then another thing we told in Islam, when you come to Allah, let's say you take one step to Allah, Azawajal, he takes 10 steps to you. Yeah. So he embraces you and he 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 come, he come hastens to you. Yeah, so you, look at this. You, you, Allah hastens to you. Yeah, you walk to him, he runs to you. He, and this is the king, Al-Malik, the king of the universe. The king of the universe hastens to me or to you. That's beautiful. Yeah. You know what I mean? And if Allah loves you, that's gender for you. That's it. And and all you need is Allah's love. That, that, it doesn't matter if I love you or he loves you or she loves you. It's all about it's, Allah's it's love. Mostly, if Allah loves you and everyone hates you, that shouldn't matter. Yeah. But if everyone loves you and Allah hates you, no, that, that, that's, that's a problem. You got to worry about that. Yeah, yeah. That's the worst thing. I mean, yeah. Allah hates you. May Allah keep us away from that. I mean, I mean, I mean Yara. May Allah give us his love. I mean, Yara. And, um, and this is that this, this is, uh, basically how the companions work. <coughs> See, and this is basically, you know, how the companions work. See, in our time, it's like we're 25% Muslim, 50% Muslim, 75% Muslim. The companions, Rabbi Allah, they committed their whole lives to serving Allah. Yeah. That's what it was about. Islam it wasn't about Islam. college or, you know, I got to get this done. Their whole life was based on Allah. Yeah. Every aspect of their life was about submitting to Allah. Their family, their friends, their work, their wives, their children, their business. It's all about Allah. Yeah. That's the straight path. Yeah. We're supposed to submit to Allah in every aspect of our life. Not just you go in the masjid and you put on your thobe and then you take your thobe out and you leave your Islam there. That's not Islam. Yeah. The companions, Radhi Allah, on whom they submitted to Allah totally. Their whole life was based on pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah, that's right. It's like some people, they only come to the masjid in Ramadan. Right. And they only love Allah in Ramadan. They only know Allah in Ramadan. You know, in Ramadan, you will see them 10 minutes before prayer time comes there at Fajr. But when Ramadan is over, mm -hmm. they're not there anymore. So, I mean, you doing that, you are basically disrespecting Allah. You're saying, Allah, I'm going to only love you in Ramadan. Outside Ramadan, I'm not going to love you. Right. And I heard, I actually heard a brother give a, a khutbah on this. Basically, he says that that's shirk. Because... You're basically saying Allah doesn't exist until Ramadan. Yeah. You're associating Ramadan with Allah. Yeah. You're making Ramadan a partner to Him. So you're saying Allah doesn't exist until Ramadan. He exists 30 days and the rest of the 400 or whatever days are left in the year, 300, whatever. Allah doesn't exist. He only exists when when, when you see the moon most sighting. And this is not Islam. Allah did not create us except for Him. Yeah. He created us for Him. Uthman radiallahu anhu said that you know, oh son of Adam, Allah created you for him, but you seek to belong to others. So Allah created us totally for his sake, to worship him. That's This is our purpose in life. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Right, Allah as we just said in the, in the verse, we haven't created humans and jinns except that they worship. So our whole point of being here in the dunya is to worship Allah. Right. And and when we die, inshallah, we go to Jannah. That's where we go crazy. You know, we do whatever we're going to do in Jannah. Yeah, but in dunya, right. we live here. We have to listen to him. We have to obey. Or we have to follow his commandments. If he tells us you could do this, we do it. If he tells us to stay away from it, we stay away from it. It's simple as that, you know? That's right, Allah. And the thing about it, Allah only tells us to do good things. Yeah. Now, 
anything that Allah tells us to do, if you look, there's wisdom behind it, it's good for you. And anything he tells us not to do, if you look, the wisdom of it is, is that it's bad. So anything Allah tells us to not to do is because it's good for us. Yeah. Not one thing Allah prohibits us from is good. So subhanAllah. So in conclusion, basically, if you do what Allah tells you to do and you stay away from what Allah tells you to stay away from, that will earn you the, the, the love of Allah Azza wa Inshallah, yes. That's the truth. And um, we ask Allah to guide us. I mean, because if Allah doesn't guide us, we have no guidance. Yeah. You know, I mean, and we ask Allah to give us pure intentions and pure deeds. Because you have to make sure your intention is right. If your intention is not right, your deed doesn't even matter. Yeah. So we, we ask Allah to give us pure deeds and pure intentions and to guide us. I mean, I mean b before we go away, are we, are we going to do another one next week, inshallah? Inshallah, we're going to continue to do this series and if Allah wins. What are we going to talk about next week? Taqwa, next week, inshallah? let's talk about Taqwa. Taqwa? Okay, inshallah. inshallah. Then we do Taqwa inshallah. next week. Inshallah. inshallah. See you guys next week. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.